Welcome back to the CPU Galaxy channel. Well, today I can offer something really special. The slowest 486 clocked at solid 16 MHz and the right booster to upgrade this turtle to 133 MHz. I was lucky to find something rare, a mainboard which supports the lowest clocked 486 ever made and this at solid 16 MHz. Yeah, and I'm still not sure who bought this back in the days, because I would definitely prefer a well built up 386DX at 40 MHz. I did already a video about a 20 MHz 486 build and researched what the motivation was from Intel to release those damn slow 486 beasts. So watch this video if you are interested on that. The board we have here on the bench today is the Chaintec 425SX and supports front side bus speeds of 16, 20, 25, 33 and 50 MHz. Yeah, and this gives us many possibilities to play around with that. Populated in the socket we can find here the 486SX16 CPU. For all of you who don't know it, SX means that it is coming without a floating point unit. So the biggest advantage to the 386 here is definitely the 8KB of level 1 case the 486 architecture came up with. This would be actually an interesting video as well to compare the 486.16 to the 386SX16 and the 386DX40. Yeah, enough material for future videos. Next to the CPU we have here an unpopulated socket for the Vitec 4167 floating point unit. This is special. Uh, this is a special floating point unit, which is much faster as a standard Intel 387 or 487. The board has also 64 kilobytes of level 2 cache installed and we would be able to upgrade it to 25 kilobytes as well. So this is an early 486 platform and is offering just an ISA bus, no local bus, no PCI bus, just pure 8 MHz ISA power. And I'm already curious what we can press out of this setup at the end. 8 MB of uh, fast page memory, a SIS chipset and a crystal which can get replaced gives us here enough room for different variations of speeds and performance. Yeah, well, and to scare the shit this mainboard we will use a very interesting upgrade CPU, the Kingston Turbo Chip. There were several overdrives already provided by Intel at this time, but only up to 100 MHz. So the Kingston Turbo Chip was definitely a great alternative to get this extra more bunch. Released in the mid of the 90s, it came up with an AMD 5X86 CPU clocked at 133 MHz and voltage regulators as well, which gives you the possibility to put this into any 5V 486 sockets, because the 5x86 is running at 3V. Normally we know the 5x86 in ceramic package, but here we have this surface solder chip, which is I think a low power version, but I'm not sure about that. But with the just uh, a fan glued uh, on the chip without a heatsink, I assume that this version of the CPU is not producing so much heat at this high clock speed. Yeah, 133 MHz clock quadruple. Qu how this is quadrupled? What is this strange word? It's hard for me to pronounce. Is Austrian? 133 MHz clock quadrupled. <laughs> 16 kilobytes level 1 cache and a decent floating point unit should kick our mainboard here to the limits. Yeah, there's also a nice installation guide online which describes nicely how to install this upgrade. It's written there that you can install this beast in any 486 machines without using any drivers. Well, we will see. The one I have here is new old stock and the Virgin and will work for the first time in its life here on my bench. How cool is that? And that just to satisfy our retro computer addiction. But first, let's check the original configuration at 16 MHz here and what performance we can get to compare it at the end. As usual, I will use an Zeng ET 4000 AX for my ESA builds. Further, we need an IDE controller and a drive 
which will be actually uh, this uh, CF card IDE adapter and again the network card which I'm misusing to load the XT IDE boot room. Yeah, if you're interested how this is working, I can recommend to watch the video series of the channel Necroware. Yeah, he is explaining nicely what's behind that and how to do it by yourself. So no need for me to explain it here on my channel. He's doing a great job as well. Yeah, everything is installed properly now and we are ready to switch on our computer here. Yeah, and let's see if we get a post screen now. Yeah, we have the ticking noise from the RAM and immediately a post screen. It's showing one megabyte display memory, very nice, and eight megabytes of RAM. Here we can see our 64 kilobyte of level 2 cache is also shown up here and the 16 megahertz of CPU clock and booting straight ahead into those without any issues. That is very nice. Let's check first. Um, the BIOS. So let me check here. So we have here a standard American Megatrend BIOS. We know with these fancy colors. Nothing special here to see. Normal settings for the drives and so on. So let's check external internal cache is switched on. Turbo switch function enabled. So here is everything fine. Also system ROM is enabled and uh, video ROM is shadowed. That's very good. We have also here advanced settings and yeah, I think here is everything set to default. And yeah, we can set here several things also later on. Speed of the VRAM, faster, faster, slower. But for now, I will leave it as it is to see the performance of our 16 megahertz 486 then let's reboot now yeah and again immediately booting so it seems that this system works quite fine let's start with uh, speed swiss what we can see here at the end and after finishing, it's showing here the 486 SX at 17 MHz is showing here, floating point unit no, of course, and it's showing here also a memory bandwidth at 16.06 MB per second. The CPU score is 6.27, which is also in the range of around, I can see here a 386DX40, somehow like that. And interesting, the test results here of the memory, it's not even detecting the level 2 cache, because there is not much difference between a level 2 cache and a normal uh, memory bandwidth. Let's say we can clearly see here the 8 kilobytes of level 1 cache, which is shown here at 17.6 megabytes per second, and the memory throughput at 13.31 megabytes per second. But it's not even, as I said, showing the level 2 cache because there is just a slight difference in speed. Well, then move on. And let's check what Norton Swiss Info is showing here. Also here, 486 SX, 17 megahertz, and we get a CPU speed of 36 points here. And compared to the 386DX33, it's just one, uh, 0 0.1 points ahead. So um, Norton says here at the end that our 486SX16 is equivalent to a 386DX33. Very interesting. Then let's check landmark. I'm interested on the speed of the video card. For the video card we get here 3244.36 characters per millisecond, which is already a good value and more than I expected here for uh, this machine. I'm curious how much we can gain here for the video card performance at the end. Then the next one, 3D Bench 10C. And we get a score here of 12.2 at the end. So next test, PC player in 320 by 200. Yeah, also here a pretty slideshow at the end. But I'm curious, I don't expect here more than 2-3 uh, frames per second. Yeah, at the end it could get finished with 2.9 frames per second. Very interesting. So last but not least, of course we will check Doom. What frame rate we can get here. I know always playing Doom on a machine is absolutely a must. 
but I don't expect much here on these 16 megahertz and just on this uh, ISA bus uh, uh, mainboard. But yeah, it looks already like a slideshow and let's see how much frames we will get at the end. And we are finishing here with... What do we get? What do we get? We finish here with 9441 real ticks, which are at the end 7.9 frames per second. So not really a rocket and yeah, so Doom is not really a pleasure to play here. What I also would like to check is uh, check it. It's always interesting what we get here also in the benchmarks for the CPU. Also here showing 16.66 megahertz. And we got 8085 dry stones. And of course not much for the floating point uh, benchmark because we don't have a floating point unit installed and just 152 kilo whetstones. Well, it seems that the system is working quite fine and yeah, time to make some upgrades here. But before we go for the AMD or for the Kingston Turbo Chip CPU, I would like to see if we can get more out of the 16 megahertz system. Um, that means we will upgrade now the cache a little bit and tweaking also the BIOS settings. To get the maximum out of our SX16486 here, I will remove the 64 kilobytes of level 2 cache and I will put this uh, 256 kilobytes of cache into our sockets here. The next thing I will change is are the RAM sticks. I will change it to nice uh, 60 nanoseconds um, memory sticks. Actually, those are from Topless. They are made by Topless. It was a German company. And actually, they are very, very reliable and extremely stable also for overclocking or getting um, the settings to zero weight states. You can see here it's interesting. There are no chips soldered on the PCB. You have here just some kind of resin or something like that. That means the silicon dies are directly sticked here to the PCB and bonded also to the PCB and covered then with this resin to protect the, the silicon dye. Um, this uh, means at the end uh, lower parasitics of the package which is soldered here usually and yeah that makes these nice uh, brownish golden sticks to a very very reliable and stable um, RAM stick at the end. Well, the cache is installed now, 256 kilobytes, 15 nanoseconds cache. We got the 60 nanoseconds high quality RAM sticks now. And yeah, I would say we need to go now into the BIOS to set everything to the best options, to the highest speed, which is possible at the end to gain as much as performance on this 16 megahertz 486. Yeah, and I really believe that we can set here everything to the maximum with the chips we installed here. So cache read back option, no, it's right through with the CPU. Cache write cycle option, we can set here to two read cycle option. So the minimum is one. So shadow RAM, so we will also shadow the uh, boot XT IDE RAM to be here faster. Bus clock, we will, I will set it to one third of our clock. Wait state one, so this we can go to four maximum, minimum. What else do we have here? Nothing more. So this is actually the fastest settings we can put here. Yeah, well, we are definitely here on the maximum. Let's see if everything is working now. Yes, we get again the boot screen, our eight megabytes of RAM, the new sticks are also detected nicely and we can see here also the 256 kilobytes of cache memory and still the 16 megahertz of CPU clock. 
Speed Suite's results are extremely interesting. Even that we were tweaking all the BIOS settings with lower weight states on the DRAM and faster DRAM settings and so on, it's not showing here anything. Memory bandwidth is still at 60.06 MB per second. Of course, CPU speed is not changing here at all with 6.27. And on the graphs here on the right side, it's interesting. We can see, of course, on the graph curves that the 256 kilobytes of cache are installed, but still, the memory throughput is at 13.31 megabytes per second and did not change at all. So very interesting. I was not expecting that. Um, I was uh, hoping to see at least 5-6% improvements here, but yeah, obviously nothing. Very interesting. Nothing changed also in system information, still 36 points. Also in Landmark, nothing has changed to our uh, video performance, even if I, I put the the, the bus frequency higher, but nothing was changing. Interesting. 3244. Also in 3D Bench, nothing changed. Still 12.2 frames per second. Also here, no improvements with the new cache and the better RAM uh, settings here. PC Player, the same picture here. 2.9 frames as we had before. So no need to check Doom here as well, because it will show the same picture. So I cannot believe that all our settings had no effect at the end on the speed. And yeah, still here are the settings in the BIOS, everything set to the fastest possibilities, but we could not measure anything at all at the end. It seems the 486SX16 is so slow that you would not even see here any tweaks in the BIOS. Just kidding, I cannot explain <coughs> why this is behaving like that. But then let's go ahead and it's time to upgrade to 133 megahertz. First, we need to remove here our 16 megahertz CPU, and for that, I'm using this nice uh, PGA removing tool. This works really great, and you are not bending any pins here. Some other content creators, as Adrian, is also using this kind of tool, so this is very, very helpful, and you can get the CPUs easily out from the PGA socket. Before I put the new CPU here, we still have to uh, set one jumper here. So basically we have here a 33 megahertz crystal and this jumper was uh, putting the frequency into half on the 16.5 megahertz for the SX16 before. Now we need to change this jumper and now we have the full uh, uh, frequency from our oscillator here and for our Kingston turbo chip we need at the end 33 megahertz on the front side bus. Before we put in the chip, please consider also to put it always in the right direction. The socket here has a flattened corner and on the chip you can see here also a white marked corner, which means that this uh, needs to get aligned. Otherwise you will fry definitely the chip or the mainboard. Gently pressing. Yeah, and everything is Good to go now and I'm hoping that this thing is posting at the end. The question is, do we get a post screen or not? Switched on, the fan is spinning from the CPU and... Yes, we have a post screen, this thing is actually working. Yeah, I had really my doubts that this was really working. And something might be wrong, we can see here 66 MHz of CPU clock. Maybe it's just the BIOS is not detecting it by the right way, or we have here some troubles. Let's check first with SpeedSys again what we can get here. Come on, let's show us here 133 MHz. And yes, it's showing us here AMD 5x86 clocked at actually 133 MHz. What an upgrade from 16 MHz to 133. The memory bandwidth is also very, very good now. We jumped from 16.6 MB to 143 MB per second. This is two times, more than two times faster actually than we had before. CPU speed is now at 49. Uh, 39, which is also insane compared to the 6.27 we had before. And very interesting, we can see already a lot of improvements here on the graphs for the memory bandwidth. So it's still not recognizing here uh, the level 2 cache, but still 
The level one cache is showing up here 16 kilobytes. So this is also compared to the eight kilobytes before a huge improvement. And now with 83.78 megabytes per second before we had 17.59. So a huge improvement here. It's almost five times as fast as we had it before. Memory throughput at 47.33 megabytes per second. This is also 3.5 times faster than we had before. Really, really nice that this upgrade here is working so well. Norton Sysinfo is also showing here the wrong CPU, Cyrix 486 at 117 megahertz, but we got a nice score with 194.5. Really, really nice. Also in Landmark, we get 33% more on our video card throughput, 4330 characters per millisecond. This is also actually a very good value for an ISA video card. 3D Bench is also coming up with 44.8 frames per second, so also a huge improvement to the 12 frames we could achieve with the 16 MHz CPU. Yeah, and same huge improvements here, a PC player, 16 frames instead of 2.9 we had before. So this worked out really, really well with this Kingston Turbo chip here. Yeah, and also in Doom, I expect here now a huge uh, difference to what we got before. 7 point something, 7.9 frames we had before were not really playable, but I expect to have here a decent frame rate that Doom is playable here on just an old ISA setup with the right CPU upgrade at the end. Yeah, the bottleneck here is for sure the ISA video card, which uh, is for far not so fast than a PCI or a Visa local bus card. But yeah, I think we managed with some overclocking at 11 uh, megahertz on the ISA bus now to get some frame rates here. Yes, 3154 real digs, which are at the end 23.68 frames per second. Wow, how cool is that? Just the ISA video card, almost 24 frames in Doom. This is really, really cool. Yeah, and check it is also reaching here the most, the maximum performance level at the end. 55,852 dry stones instead of 8,000 we had before. An insane increase at the end. And of course, also a huge improvements here on the floating point unit because we have one available right now and we got 19,938 kilo weightstones although there are not many programs or games under those which are utilizing a floating point unit. Also Duke Nukem is running with a decent frame rate here. I know it could be much better on a system with 133 megahertz but yeah definitely the ISA bus is here the bottleneck the VGA card on the 11 uh, megahertz ISA bus now is limiting us here a lot and I can tell you uh, a frame rate of 18 to 20 here in Duke Nukem also with just an ISA VGA card is already a very very good result. And this was indeed a double interesting build for me, experiencing the slowest 486 at 16MHz, which was not running so bad at the end, to this massive upgrade with the Kingston Turbo Chip to 133MHz. An interesting setup at the end with some limitations on the ISA bus, but nevertheless I enjoyed a lot this hardware for gaming a bit. I hope you liked the video, follow me on Twitter if you want to see more in between. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Your Peter.